So Anthropic just released Claude 4 in the form of Sauna and Opus, and they're claiming that Opus 4 is the world's best coding model with sustained performance on complex long-running tasks and agent workflows, and that Sauna is a significant upgrade to Claude Sonnet 3.7, with the most important aspect here being delivering superior coding and reasoning while responding more precisely to your instructions. Because as we all know, 3.7 decided to do a thousand things that you didn't ask it to. This was even addressed on stage here. But I think it's leaner and more narrowly focused. Um, I think in particular, it addresses some of the uh, feedback we got on Sonnet 3.7 around over eagerness, the tendency to do more than you asked for, which is sort of the opposite of laziness, which was which was an earlier problem. Yeah, Claude 3.7 being over eager is uh, one way to put it. But make no mistake, Claude 3.7 is no slouch when it comes to coding. It just couldn't focus. And based on the SWE Bench verified benchmarks, which you know I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of benchmarks now, but we got to look at them and that is Sonnet 4 and Opus 4 are 10% better than 3.7. It also says that 3.7 is basically the same as Gemini 2.5 Pro. I mean, maybe in like a black boxed example, but mm, I'm not sure about that. And before we talk about this benchmark, if you knew around here, I don't make the videos talking about benchmarks. I make the videos actually coding with the model, which I will be doing in this video in Zed, who is the sponsor of this video and has recently introduced agentic editing within Zed, which Zed is um, built in Rust, by the way. And since I find more value in that than reading benchmarks, I'm actually going to code right now, and then we can hop into the rest of that article if we really want to at the end of this video. So here I have Zed open. And as you can see, we have Claude Sonnet 4 as a part of Zed Pro, their paid plan, but you can also come through and configure, just as I've done, with whatever LLM provider you want. So I have an API key configured for Anthropic. I'm obviously testing out Sonnet 4 via the Pro plan, but also Opus 4 via the API key. GitHub Copilot Chat, DeepSeek, Google AI, LM Studio, Mistral, Olama, and OpenAI. But I figured it would be a good idea for me to test out two code bases. One is going to be a larger code base. I still have yet to decide. I'm thinking maybe I build a feature for Zed since Zed is open source. And that's a, I guess, a decently larger code base. I mean, I guess we could find out. Maybe I should move myself out the way. I'll, I'll just completely remove myself at some point. Hopping into it. Yeah, it looks good. And then um, counting the lines of code. Which lines of actual code is... 715,778, is that right? Oh, and by the way, not only is Zed open source, but Zed's new AI capabilities are also open source, so you can see exactly what the new agent panel is doing under the hood, which is awesome. But I also have a new project I'm working on that is Next.js, TypeScript, and actually Convex that I'm going to be using these models to build upon as well. So how about I get out the way and actually get to coding? So let's start off with something simple, just creating a responsive nav bar component for this little project here. All right, so I don't know why exactly it just added all of these featured tools to the tool page, maybe just to service some dummy data, but at the same time, I don't want this hard coded into the actual page. Just to clarify, I'm building like a dev tools directory here, not an AI tools directory. But it did create the nav bar component and added that nav bar to our layout. So just as a reminder, this is all that we had for UI, just dummy data in the tools, uh, whatever the slug is for that tool. But look, we have this. So that's home, home page. Do we have a tools page officially? We never had this before. And we don't have a specific, any specific data for this. So like I said, I wouldn't want it hard coded, but this is pretty solid. We had different components here. So I'm going to stage all of these changes, generate commit message, my favorite thing, add nav bar and tools page. And one thing I'll add is in that prompt, I did have it direct link to home as well as tools. And since there wasn't a tools page, it created that tools page. 
So I didn't specify it to create the tools page, but I guess just to have something there, that's what it whipped up. Now I need to fix that mistake. Tools data should not be hard coded into the page.tsx file. It should be in like a dev tools.ts within lib, which we currently have dummy tools in. I wanted to replace that and then replace the AI tools with dev tools. And I list out some of the dev tools. And then I want to add a featured Boolean to the dev tool so that we can choose six of them and that will serve as the featured section on the tools page. There we go. So we're removing this hard coded stuff. It is, we have get featured tools. So that must mean it actually added some filters down here for us. Yeah. Get featured tools um, based on this featured Boolean right here. However, I wanted, I wanted it to keep this. I didn't specify that, I just assumed it would, but it didn't. Well, all that's there. What if we come over to Convex? Oh, we don't have that page yet, do we? Actually, we should have this page. It's probably still taking in the dummy data, right? Yeah, dummy data. And I was wondering why it kept dummy data.ts when I said that dev tools should replace it, but I actually said it should replace dummy tools.ts and there is no dummy tools, it's dummy data. So it didn't assume that I meant dummy data, which is a good thing. So I told it what each tool should include. And I also said to remove dummy data.ts and only have dev tools.ts and replace anywhere that dummy data is being used with dev tools. Well, it looks good to me. The only thing that it did, I didn't specify it to is actually fix an error. So it said the task.json file should be an array. Let me fix that. That's one stray that I actually do not mind. But let's see if this actually works. I think this should be the tagline, not the entire description. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to change that. Yeah, that's a lot cleaner and Then this should work. Yeah. So now we have the full description in here. Obviously this is very ugly. So how about we fix that? Fix the contrast, fix the formatting, do all of that and see how Claude Sonnet 4 can perform UI changes as well as make it the Grovebox theme. All right, it says it did it. Let's check. Oh, that's nice. I love this color scheme. I love this yellow, this kind of muted blue here. Ooh, and then it cleaned all this up as I had said. Oh my goodness, that is a thousand times better. This actually gives me something readable. Oh my gosh. Buttons work, buttons work. Now I wanna see if it can add a new component from scratch where we're writing a review. We're gonna start with the UI and then do the convex functions. And I ain't gonna lie, I am very happy with how this turned out. Single prompt, one shot, nice and centered, nice interactivity and then you're able to post it. Now remember, this is just on the front end, so if we refresh the page, it'll disappear. We need to save this. And now I told it to save it. That means with convex, that's the context of the project. And it wrote the convex schema, as well as the reviews.ts, as well as updating the page.tsx. But it did mess up with the rating distribution that it added. It didn't start the identifier with an alphabetical character or an underscore, which it could do. So the type check failed. And this is something I could easily change, but you know, as any good vibe coder would do, and uh, we're really testing Sonnet 4, I wanted to see if Sonnet 4 could fix it. So I all I did was paste the error into it. So it changed them to a string, which was still not what we wanted. So then I did the same thing. I wanted to give it one more shot, paste the error into the agentic editing window, and it fixed it by changing it to a record with a string and a number. So take with that information what you will. So I wanted to do this example because it it's how a lot of people are gonna be using these models and the quintessential vibe coding style. Because if you don't know the tab, tab, tab tool, is not the model that you choose in the agentic editing for any of the editors. So if I'm testing out Claude Sonnet 4, I have to be prompting over here. But overall, I'm very impressed. It does UI better than any of the others I've seen, at least in terms of web development. Gemini 2.5 Pro was pretty dang good when it came to um, P5JS UI, better than all of the rest. Actually, let me test that out real quick. I've done this with most of the models. Make an addictive launch style game like Kitten Cannon, P5JS, no HTML, show instructions on screen, pixelated animals, funny physics, random obstacles that send you flying or stop you cold. Make the background scroll as you go. <laughs> Wait a second. I don't even have to put it into the pay p5js editor over here so since it is a pixel pet launcher i think this is intentional the blinking hold space to start oh wait 
All right. Oh, is it just going to be rolling this whole entire time? All right, we're busted. Um, not bad UI, but uh, something, something, something's broken. Yeah, I'm disappointed in that. That kind of sucks. Now let's hop into the Z code base and see how it can write Rust code. So I figured it would be fun to just do a little plugin that displayed the lines of code in the current document in this status bar down here. My logic here is that we'll have something definitive and consolidated while also having the AI reach into the larger code base for information and context that it needs and it may make some changes to some of the other files but primarily it'll live in the lib.rs file here. And I wanna take this step by step. So first just have the plugin subscribe to document change events and print a message to the status bar whenever the document changes, that's it. No word or line counting yet, which I was going to count the words, I changed my mind, only line counting. So just a working event hook and visible output. And this is really what I wanted to see. So you can see it going through other crates it sees that the editor subscribes to buffer events and lists how it does that, sees that the multi-buffer emits an event edited when the buffer is edited, it goes to zsourcemain.rs and reads through that, and so on and so forth, just to get all the information we need, like status bar items and how they're added. And then I'm hit with consecutive tool use limit reached, enable max mode, which this is a really nice thing about Zed, and that is it's not just going to run forever unless you want it to run forever so you have the option. I forgot to enable max mode here, but I do that later. So max mode, it just continues to run without a limit or without a limit that I've hit at least. And it goes on, writes some code, runs a cargo check, does a syntax check, uses a Clippy script, and then it even looks at the code and says, hmm, let me add some improvements to make the implementation more robust. All right, after installing a thousand dependencies, um, finish release profile, let's see if we can run Zed locally. Oh, there we go. All right, so this is the Zed I installed. This is the Zed for the code base that I'm working on. And now I want to update the plugin, so what we've been, Zed word count, which actually it's gonna be line count, I'm not, I'm not counting the words, the number of lines in the current document and show them in the status bar whenever the document changes, format it like this, lines one, two, three. And I'm doing this with Claude Opus 4 instead of Claude Sonnet 4. So I'm curious to see how it'll work as this is my first time using Opus except rate limit error. Also, what's hilarious is that I just had $13.15 before I tried to use Opus 4 right there, and it cost me almost $2 just to get hit with this rate limit. And again, this isn't Zed's fault. This is directly through Anthropic's API. It's Anthropic that has given me this rate limit error. Okay, so I'm trying to submit a rate limit increase, but this button does nothing. Even my submit button does something, whatever. So I'm just gonna have it get the number of lines in the current document using Claude Sonnet 4. Once I get that rate limit increase, I am going to test it out, maybe refactor some of this code and see how it performs. All right, so here's our display text, self.line count. There's a line count, use size, work count, status item, word count, again, should change that name. Status item view. All right, so I got a rate limit increase. Hopefully Claude Opus 4 actually works. And what I wanna do is make sure the previous two tasks are complete. That is, the plugin subscribes to document changes and it shows the current document's line count in the status bar in the format lines one, two, three, like that. Then update the plugin to only refresh the status bar message if the line count has actually changed since the last update and go. All right, so Opus confirms that the plugin does the first two issues, subscribes to document changes, which is multi-buffer event edited, and then shows line count and status bar right here. Now let's verify the plugin still compiles with optimization and added update line count to return a Boolean indicating the, if the count change compares. Okay. Oh, there we go. So we have lines 46. Do we have 46 lines? We do. What about over here? 42 lines. Now I'm curious to see, since most of this was written in Claude Sonnet 4, I want Opus to refactor the plugin for idiomatic Rust. Use descriptive naming, remove redundancy, and split logic into helper methods where appropriate. The plugin should be clean, readable, and easy to extend. I guess I could have given it this context, but oh, it's rewriting the whole thing from scratch. 
Now I did go through and change from word count status item to line count status item. It did run into an immutable borrow later used by call. Immutable borrow occurs here with self.update line count if changed editor. Could not compile it due to these previous two errors. Cannot borrow self as mutable because it is also borrowed as immutable. Good old Rust is trying to save you. Oh, compiled it again, successful. And this is what it did. So word count status item to line count status item for a more accurate name. And then line count to cached line count for a clearer purpose. Last file name to current file path, which is more descriptive. Editor subscription to buffer subscription, which is specific. Workspace to underscore workspace, which indicates it is unused. It extracted helper methods of calculate line count, extract file path, and all of the other ones. Added documentations, comments on struct and all public methods, clear explanations of the method's purpose, better code organization. And it lays out the architecture benefits from extensibility to maintainability to performance, idiomatic rust. Proper use of ownership and borrowing, match expressions instead of if let change, descriptive type annotations following rust naming conventions. I wanted to see the old code though. Extract file path, read buffer, read as singleton. Man, this is clean as far as I can tell. It handles click events on the status item. Okay, that is not a great comment. <laughs> Hmm, what does this handle click function do? It, oh, it handles click events on the status item. And then if we want future initialization logic, we'll add it right here. Keep all, well done. All right, so what are my first impressions of Claude 4, Sonnet, and Opus? Well, before I say that, let me clarify one thing, and that is when I say something's impressive or something's good or what have you, I'm not comparing it to a software engineer. I'm comparing it to the former models, the other models that, that you use. Gemini 2.5 Pro has been my go-to since it was released. Before that, I was still using Claude 3.5 Sonnet, whereas 3.7 was just too crazy in this context to do anything useful. The over-eagerness, as, as they said. Compared to those, Claude, the uh, Sonnet 4 is better. It seems to do, just first impressions again, I need to use it more. It seems to do what... 3.7 does best and what 3.5 does best better than both of those. Is it better than 2.5 Pro? I'm not sure if you're paying one to one. I don't see the cost um, difference being worth it. They, they seem very similar unless you're on something like Zed, which I get 500 prompts on their pro plan, which is pretty dang good. And then if I want to use 2.5 Pro, I can just put in my own key. I think that is how I'm going to be using it is use all my prompts or as many as I can on Sonnet 4 and then use 2.5 Pro key in Z and then I'll be able to. So that's probably how I'll move forward with using AI models. Opus 4, I just did those few prompts. It did refactor some code real nice. It, it, it was able to look back and make sure we did that right and then implement a new feature, which I liked. And it gave us very good descriptions of what it did. Uh, but uh, just based on that, it seems to be better than Sonnet 4. Uh, it also may be better than 2.5 Pro, but at the end of the day, I don't think the cost there is going to be worth it unless you just have money to burn. I didn't see exactly how much it costs with all of those prompts because I was using Zed's API key. They gave me one because their organization was higher. I said, I promise I'll only do a handful of prompts. I don't want to cost y'all an arm and a leg. But when I got that rate limit error, it took four to five seconds for it to kind of hit that rate limit. And it costs a dollar and 83 cents. I tried it twice. It costs a dollar and 83 cents each time. So for it to run for a minute, I don't even want to know how much that costs. It just does. It's not feasible. It doesn't make sense for me. I'm not going to use Opus 4 unless I'm feeling froggy and I just want to throw money at something. Have y'all used either of these models? What do you think? Do you like one more than the other? And I feel like Gemini 2.5 Pro and Sonnet 4 are really the only two in contention. When I complimented OpenAI on 4.1, I was doing just that complimenting them, saying maybe it's close to what 3.5 Sonnet is, which is not necessarily a compliment since they're like two years apart. Some people like to code with 03. I've tried it, don't like it. Maybe y'all do, I don't know. Whatever you're coding, whether it be Rust or you know some of the small projects like the Next.js project or whether it be something a bit more 
abstract or verbose Java, something. I'm sure different models perform better on with different languages and, and different contexts and different sizes of code base and things of that nature. So those are my first impressions. Sonnet 4, I like. Opus 4 seems awesome, but too expensive. That's it. My kids are going crazy in the background. I gotta go. Y'all have a good day. Let me know what y'all think. All right.